What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and on today's video I am going to be giving you my review of the One Mix Light Armor. It is a very affordable full length carbon plated marathon trainer slash racer. Let's get into it. So full disclosure, One Mix was good enough to send me this shoe for the purpose of review. However, they're not going to get to see it before you do. Okay, so let's get started with price because I did start off by saying that this was an affordable carbon plated marathon racer slash trainer. And relatively speaking, it is incredibly affordable. You can buy it for about $125 or $124.99 directly from One Mix or on Amazon. And of course, I will provide a link in case you want to pick up a pair for yourself after seeing this video. Now, I do want to start off by saying that my expectations were quite low for this shoe. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but at least I tend to focus on the bigger running brands. I don't know, maybe there's 10 of them and anything other than those big 10 brands I tend to look over. And I hope this video will change that. Or at the very least, I want you to just go and take a look at other options out there. Because for $125, I think this shoe represents very good value. Now we're gonna talk about specs, at least the specs that I have been able to find out. And most importantly, I'm gonna talk about ride and how these shoes have worked for me over the last 50K or so. But first of all, first of all, I wanna start off with the packaging, how they are sent to you. This shoe box is hard plastic. It comes with a clear plastic lid that slides off. So it's a box that actually protects your shoes when you're not using them. And if you're the type of person that likes to put your shoes on display, it's like a little dust box that you can keep them in when you're not using them. But also, hold on, also, there is this little handle on the back that comes out, you see that? And they've designed this box to go over the handle of your rolly bag. It's actually a pretty good idea. And even if I never use this box for the purpose it was intended, I really do get a kick out of seeing things that are slightly different, slightly innovative. So yeah, I do like this. Certainly not from an environmental perspective, but it was fun to unbox. Oh, and you don't just get the shoes. One Mix also sends you an extra set of inserts. This is what they look like, and these are identical to the ones that are already in the shoe. So perhaps if the ones inside wear down or start to smell, you could take them out, chuck them, throw in a new pair and you're good to go. The other thing that came in the package with the shoes is this handy little thing. These are matching socks. And I haven't actually worn these socks yet. I didn't want to ruin them by wearing them before I took them out on camera for you, but they actually feel pretty nice. They have a little tighter elastic around the top to stop the sock from sliding down. And it looks like there's a little band around the midfoot just to give a little bit of arch support. But this isn't a sock review, so I'm gonna stop talking about the socks and we're gonna get into the shoes. Okay, let's talk about weight. One Mix does claim that a US men's size eight and a half tips the scale at 8.7 ounces, which is about 265 grams. However, in my size, a US men's size 12 and a half, my pair tips the scale at 11.3 ounces or 319 grams. So I know what you're thinking, that doesn't exactly compare to other marathon training shoes that are out there. They are just a tad heavy, but I want you to hold judgment until you hear me talk about the ride. But yes, I admit they are a little heavy for what they're designed to do. But actually, I think that's probably gonna be okay. So while we're talking about weight, the shoes that I have thought that these kind of rode like are the Skechers Razor 4, which tipped the scale in my size at 10.1 ounces or 287 grams and cost $130. So pretty comparable. However, the Razor 4 only have a four foot wing plate, whereas this has the full length carbon plate. And then there's the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. That tips the scale at 9.8 ounces or 278 grams in my size. However, the Endorphin Speed 3 is $170, not exactly comparable price-wise. Now, I only bring up those shoes because they are what came to mind when I was trying to think of shoes that I have that the One Mix Light Armor actually remind me of. Now, One Mix does not provide stack heights. However, just looking at it, you can see that it's a pretty, pretty generous stack height. But we do know that it is an eight millimeter drop. If I had to guess, I might say 37 in the heel, 29 in the forefoot. But like I said, just a guess. What I do know, it is an eight millimeter drop and it feels like an eight millimeter drop, which is pretty comfortable for me. And as far as sizing goes, you did hear me say that I am a US men's size 12 and a half. And if you know me, you know that I usually wear a US men's size 13 in most shoes. The largest size that the light armor is available in is US men's size 12 and a half. And these actually fit me pretty well. And this is why I say they're true to size because my toe is just a little closer to the front of the shoe than I would normally like. I mean, it's so close, but compared with my other shoes that are a 13, I usually have a little more space in the front. So for that reason, I am gonna say that these shoes do fit true to size. Okay, let's do what we do. Let's start at the top. Let's work our way down. The build quality is very good. There is nothing that I can actually put my finger on that I would like to change as far as the quality of the shoe itself. Let me just show you the top like this with the heel collar. The heel collar is, it's quite padded towards the back of the heel collar. The padding goes down a little bit as we come forward. You can see this very prominent heel flare with the pull tab, but that heel flare is so extreme that it's really nothing 
something more than just aesthetics. The internal heel counter is quite rigid, can't really push it down. It doesn't feel quite as rigid when I'm squeezing like this, but it's fairly rigid on the back. And I guess it's because of this that I haven't experienced any heel slip when I am running in this shoe. However, you have to take this for what it's worth. I really don't experience heel slip in any of my shoes. Some of you eagle eye viewers are probably looking at this little piece of plastic back here. It says rebound on it. We're gonna talk about this in just a second. The upper can be separated into two distinct parts. This front part is very thin. One Mix describes it as a breathable fish silk jacquard upper. And just to show you how thin it is, let me put my hand in. You can see my fingers wiggling around in there like that. That's how thin it is. It's very thin. It is very much like Vaporweave, if you are familiar with the brand of shoes that uses Vaporweave. So we've got this fish silk upper across the toe box, across the midfoot, and then when we come back we can see it changes into sort of like a knit upper. And that is what surrounds the back of the shoe. And if we look at the top, we don't have a traditional shoe with a heel collar and a separate tongue. It's more like a booty fit. So when you slide your foot in, it's like sliding your foot into a sock. Now I've got to say, most of the time I am not a fan of that booty fit shoe, but I'm going to withhold judgment on the One Mix Light Armor for having this type of upper because there's really nothing negative I can say about it. The shoe fit me very well. I just don't like it. You can see we've got some very light overlays in the middle of the foot and then these overlays just giving it a little more support around the eyelet chain. But really I think the additional weight of this shoe comes from the materials they're using in the back. It's really quite substantial for a faster shoe. Okay, let's, let's talk about the lacing system because this is just, it's a little different than something that you may have seen before. You can see we've got a standard lacing system coming from the front of the shoe all the way up to where you would tie them. And then we've got these little red plastic loops. Now printed on this loop says pull. And when you do pull on these little plastic loops, now this is the final eyelet as well. So you're gonna lace through these little plastic loops and then tie your shoes in a bow. But if I pull them up, you can see they're attached to little cords. I don't know how well you can see that, but they're attached to little cords. Now these cords run through the side of the shoe on both sides and they're attached on the back to this little rubber piece here that says rebound printed across it. And if you pull this out, and you see that, you can see these two cords that wrap around and then go in the other side and then come around to the other loop. So what does this mean? Is this just an over-engineered lacing mechanism? Maybe, but I think it actually works for how it's designed. So when your foot is in the shoe, your laces are all tied down. You have your two laces tied to these plastic eye holes on the sides. When you make that final bow, you are putting tension on these two final loops, which is actually pulling them. And when you tie your shoes normally, you're putting pressure on them. That is pulling the cords around the side that is connected to this piece on the back. So ultimately what you're doing when you tie your shoes is you're pulling the back of the shoe forward slightly. And what that does is actually creates a nice tight heel fit. So perhaps if you are prone to having heel slip in your shoes, perhaps this mechanism will stop that heel slip from happening, which I hope if you do have heel slip that that would prevent it from happening because there is no additional eyelet so you could do the heel lock loop. Anyway, I was I was actually pretty happy with that. I've got to say it worked pretty well. Right, let's come down to the midsole. Now, One Mix doesn't identify what type of foam they are using other than they are using a vacuum foam. Don't actually know what that is. When I manipulate the foam, to me, it could just be an EVA. Definitely not PIBA. It's not soft enough for that. It's definitely not soft enough to be a hydrogen infused foam, but it's a vacuum foam. And then sandwiched in between that vacuum foam is their carbon fiber plate. And we've got a little window on the bottom of the outsole where you can look in and see that. Speaking of the outsole, we've got some strategically placed rubber. They call it a liquid CPU melted elastic rubber outsole. So if you were ever wondering what a liquid CPU melted elastic rubber outsole looked like, this is what it looks like. And I gotta say, it works, but no complaints. It actually feels very grippy when I run my fingers over it, but I haven't actually run in the rain in this shoe, so I can't attest to how grippy it is on wet cement, but just from my experience running on dry roads, it is extremely grippy. I don't think I'll have any problems running on wet roads, but if you have run in this shoe and you've run in the wet, let me know your experience. Now the eagle eye of you, I noticed this little nodule right here on the bottom. And it's actually a little air pocket and air unit. And I can only say that it's there to give a little more cushioning for the heel strikers, which I guess it works. I can't actually say that I noticed this actual air unit on my heel, but it looks good, it looks different, but I'm not sure how much it actually contributes to the running experience because this is a fast shoe. I've already said it, it's a marathon trainer, it's a marathon racer. I think ideally this is going to be suited for an up-tempo marathon training shoe rather than a racing shoe. And I only say that because in today's 
day and age, we have a specific shoe for every little different thing that we do. So it's very unlikely that you're going to race in the shoe that you train in on a daily basis. However, if you did have one pair of shoes and you wanted to race in this shoe, I think it would perform pretty well because the shoe feels fast. And yes, that has to be because of the carbon fiber plate, the full length carbon fiber plate that runs from toe to heel, but also it's the geometry. See this at the front? This is quite an aggressive toe spring. So when I am running in this shoe, I can actually feel myself being propelled forward. It almost feels like the shoe is rolling me forward to go on with my next step. And when I first took them out of the box and I looked at them, it wasn't particularly noticeable to me. Like I didn't pick them up and think, oh, that toe spring is aggressive. But when I put them on, I walked around the house just to make sure they fit well before I took them out for a run. I was rolling up on my toes like this. And I was like, oh, that's kind of moving me forward even though I'm standing still. So if you were in the market for a carbon plated shoe and you're not too keen on paying $200, $250, I think it'd be worth your while to pick up a pair of the One Mix Light Armor for $125. Oh, one last thing I do want to show you is when we look at the shoe from the top down, we can see that you really can't see any of the outsole. We can only see the upper. And that kind of means that the shoe is a little narrow. And when I first looked at the shoe from above, I did think, oh, this is going to be a little unstable, much like the Nike Next Percent 2. You should know that this shoe is a little unstable, but it is not nearly as unstable as the Nike Next Percent 2. Thanks for staying all the way to the end of the video. Hey, look, if you have made it this far, first of all, thank you. Second of all, drop the nail painting emoji. You know that little one that is just fingers with a nail brush? I don't know why. But if you stayed that long, why don't you drop it in the comments? Guys, my name is Matt. This is my review of the One Mix Light Armor. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple days.